you got your master's in counseling psychology and then you are currently have b3 enterprises yep okay can mm-hmm. you kind of tell me a little bit about that as well so b3 enterprises happened out of um covid okay you know um i've been a therapist you know for about 10 years just contracting just seeing you know clients part-time and you know I kind of got pushed into it because of COVID and because of that systemic racism that I mentioned earlier. Yeah. You know, um, I was like, bump this. I go work for myself. And I just believed in myself because right here, I'm not happy. And I'm not the type. I, I, I'm not going to be. I sacrifice happiness for a little while. Yeah. While we try to troubleshoot or work it out or figure out a plan, you know, and be patient. But like once. You know, I determined that this is unhealthy. Yeah. You know, and before I do something to damage my reputation, <laughs> like let me bow gracefully and go start my own business, you know. So that's what I did. You know, it's a psychology education company and I pretty much provide mental health education and therapeutic services, you know, to um schools, businesses and just the community in general. I would say why are you so passionate about I guess the mental health in, in, in general? Uh why does that spark up passion for you? Um, cause your brain control yeah. everything yeah. and it's still the most powerful thing on earth. I know we think it's computers, you know, but your brain is definitely more powerful than a, a computer and you know, you have control over it. And in terms of mental health, it's like when you hear it, what's the first thing that people think of or attribute it to? Something wrong or crazy. Something yeah. wrong, crazy, yeah. negative, bad. You know, and we have to change that mindset because we all need it. You know, so part of my mission with my company is when people hear mental health therapy, therapeutic services, they think asset based. They think skill building. They think solution finding. You know, they think self-reflection. These are all good things that everybody needs. Because here's the thing, Josiah. Everybody got mental issues. Yeah, for sure. Everybody do. No, you're right. But here's the key. You can't let your mental issues turn into mental problems. And here's the difference. Like, this is key. You know, anybody that's going to be hearing this, this is key. We all got mental issues. So an issue is just a situation or topic that needs to be discussed or debated. That's it. All right? But the difference between an issue and a problem, a problem is a topic or situation that needs to be discussed or debated and needs a solution because it's having a negative impact. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So people hear mental issues and think, oh, man, nah, no, yes, yeah. you do. Yeah. Yes, you do. You got them. And that's okay. Yeah. So you got to learn how to manage your mental issues so they don't become mental problems. And a lot of times, you know, people don't understand that. Yeah. yeah, I was going to ask you, what would you think maybe would be the obstacle for someone trying to kind of get that breakthrough or understand what you is just maybe the association that they hear the stigma with just being something crazy or something like that? Yeah, it's just the stigma aspect of it. And so the DSM, I don't think they use the DSM no more, but it's still the most reliable source, you know. What is the DSM? I'm not familiar with that. The DSM is the Diagnostic Manual of Mental Disorders. So it's like the Bible of Mental Disorders. And it has five axes. And when people think of mental illness, they normally, you know, go straight to like the third axis, which is like clinical. You know, that's your like bipolar, your schizophrenia, like the more severe. Yeah. But they have mood disorders. Right. I bet you know somebody moody right now. Yeah, we all do. I you think know what we I'm all saying? do for sure. For sure. Yeah. For right. Sure. Yeah. But then more importantly than that. When it comes to anxiety, we all get anxiety. Yeah, I know myself. I be having anxiety sometimes. We all get anxiety. Sure, yeah. But even beyond that, axis four of the DSM, axis uh, four involves psychosocial and environmental factors. So the Bible of mental disorders includes what happens to you in your social interactions and in your environment and how that impacts you. So, yeah, some of your mental issues ain't your fault. 
Yeah. So maybe people need to start understanding that. Yeah. Some of your mental issues is not your fault. So start blaming yourself. Stop being ashamed. Yeah. It ain't nothing to be ashamed about. You know, because the other piece of this too is we all have trauma. We all have trauma. You know, every last one of us, how much, how intense, that varies. Right? And it was a time where I didn't think I had no trauma. Because let me ask you, Josiah, when you hear the word trauma, what comes to your mind? Or let's say childhood trauma, because the main, you know, um, research behind this is called ACEs, Acute Childhood Experiences, because all trauma starts in childhood. So when you think of childhood trauma, what comes to your mind? Um, maybe just some kind of traumatic event, but like that's probably what I would think. But as an adult, it could be a lot of things, uh, just any kind of whatever verbal but, stuff that might be going on that they just not mm -hmm. maybe not be at them specifically, they just kind of be around it. Mm -hmm. It could be a lot of things like that. And even like your situation, like you said, in school, uh, getting a sash for the academics, that would, that would, I would say oh, that yeah. would be a, a childhood trauma as well, oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But let's go to the fundamental trauma. Yeah, yeah. Abuse. Yeah. Physical, verbal. Yeah. You know, and neglect. Yeah. You know, I'm not giving you what you need, whether it's food, whether it's love, whatever. Uh, um, Abuse and neglect, those are the main two when people think about, you know, you know, bad trauma, right? So for me, I was like, okay, I ain't never had no trauma. I got plenty of love and food at the crib. You know what I'm saying? I got whoopings, but I probably yeah. deserved them. Yeah. You know, we all yeah, good, yeah, right? Yeah. But there was a third category. And the third category is household dysfunction. When I start looking at the things under household dysfunction, oh, yeah. That's a big category, I would say, for a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? Even I would, you know, even for myself, you know what I'm saying? Because everybody's raised differently. You come from different backgrounds and, and things like that. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it could be anything. But, yeah. Yeah, you know, so basically just bringing knowledge to people and just trying to flip that on its head and let people know that when it comes to mental health, you should take care of the one organ that dictates everything in your body. Yeah. You know, like you tend to everything else. You in there, not to pick on the ladies, but you in here for 30 minutes trying to fix this eyelash. <laughs> if you can spend 30 minutes on an eyelash, like you can be spend 30 minutes on mental health. You know, and the same thing that goes with fellas. I got a homie, he'll work on his car for six, seven hours. If you got six, seven hours to work on a car, then you got some time to work on your mind. 